So without further ado, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak before you today. I stand here in a college noted for knowledge in front of a group of people who are very progressive and looking to diversify the way that they train, the way that they educate, and the way that they work. And that's why we founded Hone Virtual Education here in Alberta, is we wanted to change the way that first responders and healthcare professionals train and prepare for real world emergency situations that you wouldn't otherwise be able to prepare for in real world training applications. And so with that said, oh, sorry, here one second guys. So what we did was we've, we identified within emergency services one of the areas that we really wanted to focus on was stress management. Something that's applicable regardless of industry but very specifically within emergency services is stress management. How is it that you are in an emergency situation able to maintain a cool head and be prepared for life threatening or life changing situations? And the way that you do that is you practice, you train, you prepare. And so the way that we effectively train for stress management traditionally has been, well, you deal with when you get there. But it's been proven now that actually if you are not training at a higher level of stress during, sim or during training and simulation, you will not rise to that occasion when it comes time in a natural emergency. You will fall to the level of training that you are, or that you've experienced during your training simulation times. And so our mission is to turn around and create a platform that allows first responders and healthcare professionals to train using emergency or to train stress management techniques. So when you look at how emergency services has traditionally trained, you see that they're using mannequin-based training, and that's, that's very frequent. The reason that we use mannequin-based training is because it simulates a real human being that you can touch. There's a tactile element. You're able to feel and interact with it. Those mannequins have never been able to display signs and symptoms. You've never been able to turn around and have a mannequin have a conversation with a human being, unless you're looking at a price tag of about $100,000. And using virtual reality, we're actually now exploring different ways to provide highly immersive training solutions, very similar to what we have here, where you're able to have an interactive and intuitive conversation with a virtual patient. And then as that patient's conditions get worse, you're able to turn around and provide treatment. And this is a very interesting and exciting time because for the first time ever, you can have someone who's having a heart attack. And you can go through that scenario 10, 15, 20 times you can start to identify key features within a person that are going to indicate non-verbally that that person is having a heart attack. And you would never have had an opportunity to see those conditions or those features before the, inv before the invention of these type of training programs in virtual reality. So what does the future look like for, for first responders? And I mean, my background, I'm a dual trained firefighter and paramedic. I've been working in the industry for a little over five years now. I have three different specialties that I operate within. First is hazardous materials, second is tactical operations, and third is flight operations. So having a, uh, a birth of knowledge within the industry, I've seen different specialties and I understand that you really aren't able to start to prepare for these high acuity, low occurrence events using traditional methods of training. And so when you look at firefighting specifically, one of the first use case applications that's being utilized by that industry is augmented reality. And they're using augmented reality, as you can see here in the pictures, to display what's going on inside of a home. And so I know we talked about stress management and how is this helping with stress management. Well, one of the, or actually I should say, the biggest input for the human brain to process data is through our eyes. And so when you take a firefighter, you put them into a house that's about 500 degrees Celsius or hotter, and then you turn around and you remove all visual cues completely, you've now elevated that, the working level of stress for that individual to near maximum threshold or capacity. So what we're doing is we're now, and not us personally, this is through a company called Quake, and they're based out of the States, but they've created an augmented reality headset that actually allows you to visualize what's going on inside of a fire or a working structure fire. And that is just one use case application that you see. And it, it really is, it's changing the way that first responders, specifically firefighters, are able to interact and perform. So dialing in, why is virtual reality better than a classroom? Well, there's a couple reasons. So deliberate practice is a term that's been around for about 30 years. Coined by a gentleman by the name of Anders K. Erickson, deliberate practice is taking and putting a group of individuals and pushing them to their peak level of performance. 
The way that you do that is you turn around and you establish a baseline, you test those individuals, you figure out where they are currently. Then, slowly, very slowly, you add on very specific skills and you increase the level of performance that these individuals are capable of operating at. Why virtual reality though? Because you have a cost-effective, repeatable, and easily deliverable training solution that can be accessed anywhere for a fraction of the cost of a traditional training mannequin. You're looking at a price of $10,000 or more for a basic training mannequin that does nothing. It's just an anatomically correct physical model that will stand there like this or lay on the floor. For a fraction of that cost, emergency services departments are able to access virtual reality headsets and PCs, just like what we have here, and you're now able to start applying different training methodologies that before were never available, including the access and in, 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 engaging, excuse me, engaging your users in deliberate practice. And that is now possible using virtual reality. And so why, why is it so, so powerful? And there's four things. First is you isolate specific skills. You can turn around and you can build a training program in virtual reality that's highly complex or very simple. You can teach one very, very specific skill or you can teach a wide breadth of skills. Then the individual is able to go through that training experience multiple times. Because we're the majority of us are kinesthetic or visual learners, we like to interact. Human beings retain knowledge by actually performing these tasks. Then you start to repeat. And with virtual reality, you can repeat and repeat and repeat until you master. And that is how you create better practitioners and you create better communities. So when we look at deliberate practice, and you see here behind me there's a graph, and on the left side you see here's your level of ability, and here's the time. We can all agree that the first time you try something, your, your, your level of success is very similar to what you see happening here in red. You kind of, you get that initial like, oh, this was good, and then you, you fall flat on your face. You're like, ah, oh, I've got a lot to learn, there's a lot of different habits, there's a lot of different little techniques and tricks to making this a very successful experience. So then you continue to practice and you see here that the amateur will continue to go and they'll go until they're proficient. They're like, all right, you know what, I can do this skill. If I was asked to do this in three or six weeks time, yeah, I, I would remember how to do it. But what we're looking for and specifically within emergency services is we want to create first responders who all operate at that level right there, the expert level. And the reason for that is, is because we want to create better communities. You want to have first responders who are calm, capable, and confident in their actions and the care that they're providing to the communities that they're serving. These are our families too. These are our communities too. And we want to make sure that we're giving the best possible care to our communities. So when you see, we talk about stress management, we talk about deliberate practice. What does this all mean? Why is it important? Well, really quickly, you see that a person can go from being in a state of boredom and depression to a point of being in an increased attention to their optimal level of performance to very, very quickly experiencing strong anxiety, and then they come crashing back down the other side to a complete meltdown. This can physiologically happen within a six-second period. And I'm going to very quickly show you a, a video of what we're doing using biometric data where we capture the data from users and then we're providing in-simulation coaching to mentor them on when they need to be breathing as well as when they need to be turning around and just taking a second to, to stop, realign themselves and reposition so that they're able to move forward. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and click play here. And so what you're seeing here, this was a virtual reality experience called Richie's Plank. And so with Richie's plank, we had someone who had never tried virtual reality before. She has a fear of heights, and we turn around and we measure her EEG data, which you're seeing on the top three lines here, and then, or excuse me, the top four lines here. So we're measuring alpha, gamma, beta, and theta waves coming out of the brain, as well as we're measuring her heart rate and her respiration rate. And so as you see, she's going up the elevator, her stress levels are climbing, her anxiety is rising, and the door's open. And all of a sudden, look at what's happening here in her heart rate, as well as in her gamma and beta waves up top. They've peaked. This person is now panicking. This, the individual who tried this experience is a paramedic. She's been practicing for 10 years now. We started asking her very basic life, BLS, basic life-saving questions 
she was unable to answer them. The reason for that was because her heart rate was about 155 during, at this point during the simulation. She was so um, panicked and in a f state of fear that very basic concepts that are her bread and butter were un un unobtainable to her. She did not understand how to perform these basic tasks. So what we're looking to do is using this type of feedback, we're now going to be able to start to provide coaching to these individuals during simulation. After simulation, the user will then be able to look at a video very similar to this, and they'll be able to see, oh, okay, so this is the video that I was, this is my in-headset head, in headset display, what was going on. Here's what was going on inside of my brain. These red bars indicate my respiration rate, and this is my heart rate. So next time, I know that when I see certain physiological tri or certain triggers within an environment, that's going to incur or that's going to induce panic in me personally, and I'm going to have the following physiological responses. So that's uh, that's my presentation for today, guys. I'll uh, I'll pause that so it's not on repeat. I'll open it up to questions from the audience. Do you guys have any questions? I apologize, by the way, about the technical issues. We got started a little late, so this was a little bit rushed. But I please any questions. No? No questions? Awesome. Great job, Alex. Oh, sorry, I, I hear a... Sorry, was there a question, guys? I said, hey, great job, Alex. I, I don't know if I was the only one, but the, the graphs that you were just talking about, all I'm seeing is the one with a big green bar with a yellow line that goes up and a red line that goes down. Is that what you're talking to? That, uh, yes. And so are you guys able to see the white text on and the backdrop around it? I have, I have nothing right now, to be honest. I can't see any slides. So, Johnny, if you hit, uh, if you look right down in front of you, you see that eyeball there on your menu option? You'll actually be able to pull the slides up that I'm, uh, I'm looking at, and it'll bring it much closer to your face so you're able to see uh, up closer, but I'll, uh, I'll explain this graph really quickly. So what you're seeing here on the Alex, left hand side, Alex, just yep. for, I actually just have a gray screen just even when I do, I was trying to mess around with that, but it's okay. I... Absolutely. No, no, that's, that's great. Thank you for the feedback. I apologize. So I'll really quickly explain what we're looking at here, guys. On the X axis, we have performance. This is a human level of performance starting at low and going to high. And then from left to right, we have the stress scale. Obviously, left being low, right being high. And so what we're talking about here is the yellow line indicates the per a person's level of stress and anxiety as they prepare for a task. So, for example, in emergency services, this could be the ride in an ambulance to an EMS call. Once you arrive on scene, you're very quickly moving from the yellow into the green. And if it becomes an overwhelming experience for you, you very quickly move from the green into the red and you've gone from the top where you have strong anxiety to a complete meltdown. And that happens generally in about six seconds. Uh, and we see those physiological indicators regardless of person. Uh, it's about a six second time frame to go from strong anxiety to complete meltdown. Wow. Sorry guys, I, I wasn't aware that, uh, that the graph wasn't, uh, wasn't showing very That's well. Good. No, the graph's there. Fine. Is there any other questions from the audience today, guys? That was great. Great job. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Woo. Well, thank you, Alex, for that great presentation. Um, oh, actually, before we end off, uh, it, so it sounds like we are getting a question from the IV building uh, whenever we receive that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that question is, would it be possible to see more of their training uh, simulation scenarios? Uh, yes, if you can have that person get in touch with me, I would love to show, we would love to show you more of what we're doing in the work that we're doing currently. And my right, email is, so. <coughs> yeah, if, uh, I can, if you guys have my email listed. Uh, yes, we would, yeah, we'd be happy to um, forward that email to anybody who would want to see it to see all of these training simulators 
Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. We would love to chat with anyone who's interested in this technology. Um, and the other thing is, is that the biometric component that we're working on, it is agnostic. We're not focused specifically on emergency services. Uh, students and preparing for test anxiety is one area that we're also actually looking at with this technology as well. Really what we're looking to do is focus on getting the community so that people have a better understanding of stress management during high pressure, high stress situations. And that could be emergency services, that could be someone who's a high performing business individual, someone who's getting ready for uh, you know, your university exam. Um, these are all areas where you will have high pressure and high stress in your life. And it really fundamentally comes down to learning how to control your breath. And that's what we're looking to do is create a platform that utilizes expanded reality technologies as the medium to deliver training solutions for people to manage their stress. Awesome. All right. And for all the people here in Rumi, uh, would you mind uh, giving them your email if you're all right with doing Absolutely. that? Yeah. My, uh, my email is a.jackson at honevr.ca. And that's spelled H-O-N-E-V-R.ca. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming out, guys. I wanted to thank everyone uh, very much in the audience and on the Twitch live stream for being part of Merging Realities. Um, just as a really quick note, I know it's almost the end of my time, but as the chapter president for the VRAR Association of Alberta, um, I wanted to thank all of you guys for your support and what you've done in terms of coming out and making this event possible, making this event a reality. Uh, you know, all of the different speakers that have found time, all of the different members of the community, Lethbridge College itself for taking a, taking a chance on this. This has been an amazing opportunity. Uh, the team at Rumi, Doghead Simulations, I know I've seen some of you guys running around today. Amazing work. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, and the, the, the VR AR ecosystem as a whole on a global level. Very incredibly proud of the work that's been done over the last 12 to 18 months. You see incredible advances in the technology and the attitude that people are displaying. This is not a traditional industry where people have been, oh, well, I can't talk to them because they're doing something similar. This has been an ecosystem that is really changing the way that business practices have been performed. And so I really do, I give kudos to the industry and the ecosystem, and I thank you all very much.